Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius in Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming, independent Catholic Church of the Reformed Catholic Church. I am also the Servant General of the Franciscans of Mercy. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe in the gospel. Those words are from Mark 1, verse 15. Today, I'd like to suggest that every individual who believes in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and believes that he is the Son of God who became human as proclaimed in Luke 3:22, with a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, my favor rests on you at his baptism. Every person who believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, Isaiah, Jacob, and David, and the God of Moses, I am who am, needs today more than ever to turn back to that God, turn back with devotion and prayer, especially prayer. We need to pray. Why? We need to pray because in the last decade, it seems that the forces of darkness have become increasingly more intent in their battle between good and evil. And they've caused consecrated religious to abandon their vows and commit to heinous deeds in violation of their vows. Families have been torn apart by divorce. Parents, brothers and sisters have been disowned or have disowned their children because God created them with a sexual orientation towards members of the same sex. And not that they did something criminal. Discrimination is rampant. My college, a Jesuit college here in Boston, you guessed it, Boston College, has actually had to deal with signs of hatred and discrimination towards blacks or African Americans as we are truly should call them. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't like that black because not all African Americans and not all Africans are black. They're all shades of wonder, light to dark, medium. And yet BC has had to deal with signs of hatred and swash stickers in dormitories. So discrimination has become rampant in our country, bullying. Uh, there is so much hatred in vitriol that it seems that Satan is winning the battle. And so it is incumbent upon each and every one of us who believes, who calls themselves a Christian, who worships and adores the one only true God, the God of Abraham, to start praying to overcome the powers of darkness. Children are starving throughout the world. Homelessness is rampant here in the United States. We recently have just gone through one of the coldest periods 
in over a hundred years with temperatures not getting above 20s. With wind chill factors sub-zero, 25, 30 below zero. And that's here in Massachusetts, not out in Fargo or someplace. And there's been people who are homeless. People have died because of this cold. People who claim Abraham as their father supposedly followers of Muhammad are committing deeds so vile that are totally, completely, diametrically opposite those found in the Quran. And all Judeo-Christians need to know that, that what these people are doing is not the tenets of true followers of Islam, of Muhammad. No, no, not at all. These people who are committing these atrocities are doing so because they are overtaken by the power of darkness. The time is now to put things that have divided us aside and find the things that bind us together. We need that now more than ever. We all know that God allowed Satan to tempt Job. And if you haven't read it, I implore you, go read the book of Job. It is probably my most favorite book in the Old Testament. In fact, it actually saved me at a very dark time in my life when I realized that the temptations that we get, the horrible things that sometimes give us, cause us despair, are Satan trying to turn us away from God. And if we hold true as Job did, then God will reward us. He rewarded Job. He returned everything that Job lost. He rewarded back to him. The world today is being tempted. And sadly, far too many who believe in the one true God have gone over to the side of darkness just so that they could gain wealth, power, fame, fortune at the horror of many people because the people who have been hurt the most are those who can least afford to be hurt. The poor, the unemployed, the homeless, the sick, the aged. So many prophets and saints who have preceded us have pled for God's help and guidance. And have often the one common denominator of almost every saint is to pray, 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 trust in God, have faith in God, don't give up. I believe that the times today are calling us. Whether we call the Creator God, Yahweh, Jehovah, by whatever name we call the one only true God, we need to implore him, beg him, turn back to him, attempt to live our lives in a manner that is befitting and fits the scriptures 
whether in the Old Testament of the New, we have been called to care for the sick and the needy and the poor and the aged and the widow. Everyone needs to set aside just 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening to talk to God, communicate with God, pray to God. If you do that, and maybe every time you go to sit down to eat, say a prayer of thanksgiving for the food you're about to eat. And ask God to inspire our government's leaders and the leaders of all governments around the world to find a way to end the wars and the genocide that is tearing people's lives apart and to find ways to care for the sick and the needy and the poor, to improve health care and make it affordable for every single person, to ensure that every single citizen gets a quality education that is affordable. I do not know how anyone today can afford to send children, especially hard working class people, can afford to pay the tuitions that some of our colleges are charging. I don't understand how stadiums like Gillette can be filled when the cost to get in and the parking and everything for a family of four is well over $500 sometimes or more. I don't understand that. All I know is that I run into so many people who are hurting, especially all the people that I deal with who are sick, aged, shut-ins, in nursing homes, assisted living facilities, hospices. Our new tax laws are such that it's going to dissuade people from wanting to make donations because they're not going to be able to deduct them from their taxes anymore. And that definitely, I think, I've already seen the results of that. Our annual appeal is currently going on. It started right at the beginning of this year. An appeal has gone out asking people to help us to raise what we need to pay the bills for this ministry, the projected bills for this ministry, and that's without any unexpected expenses of at least 473, uh, five, I'm sorry, $573 a month we need to raise. Well, since it's gone out, we have received, as of today, zero donations. So I'm not feeling too good. I hope that they pick up because if they don't, even this TV ministry is threatened. And definitely our work to all the places that we celebrate Mass and bring Eucharist to and the helping the poor in the streets and all those things that we do are in dire jeopardy. But that's another whole issue. My point today that I'm trying to implore you, beg you, is please, the time is now to start and get back. And if you have not had a strong prayer life, to develop one. Pope Francis has had these statements to say about our societies today. One of them is, 
He has said that consumerism has led to the anxiety of losing. Consumerism has led to the anxiety of losing and has implored us on numerous occasions to look after nature, to rapidly forget the negative, respect those who think differently, and actively seek peace. And his last comment that I want to bring up is, a people that does not take care of its elderly has no future. A people who do not care for their elderly has no future. Those are Pope Francis' words, and I concur, I see it. There has been a chain of nursing homes. I won't mention the name of the company. But we actually celebrated mass at a couple of their facilities and would bring Eucharist to them. I received an email from one of the residents begging me to please do something since they have been told that they have to find a place to go to because the corporation is closing their facility. And I found that the corporation is indeed closing every one of their nursing homes and rehab centers. And this corporation probably houses, I would say, maybe a thousand or more. Just here in Massachusetts, there are hundreds and there's one, two, three, four, five, six seven of the, uh, that I'm aware of within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, each of them have a hundred or more patients, and they've been told, go find a place to live. I responded and let this person know that what they're doing is not, is against the law, that they have a responsibility to, re, to replace or place these people in another facility. But the problem is, there aren't that many facilities. Our elderly are, by just nature, our elderly are increasing far greater than the youth. And therefore, we have more elderly who are in need of facilities where they can be cared for adequately and where they can be cared for economically that they can afford to go to. Low income subsidized senior housing in which I live in, because there's, I could not, there's no way on $1,080 a month I could afford to live anywhere else have waiting list, every single one of them have waiting list of over a year or more. We are in dire, desperate need in our, con our nation. And our government is not doing anything to really take care of the issue. So we do need to pray a lot. We need to turn to God, we need to try to reverse this trend that has happened in the last few decades of commercialism and of the need for more and more wealth and a total disregard for the poor, the sick, the aged, the hungry, the homeless, the unemployed. Oh yeah, there are, you will see some cases and some wonderful stories and it's so heartwarming and I applaud those people who have and actually have made the news saying they've, somebody found out they did this one deed or there's this act where people do acts of kindness, but there's so few. We need more of that. So 
for this third Sunday of Ordinary Time, January 21st. And we only have a couple of more weeks. And next thing you know, on February 14th, we're going to start Lent. Yes, Ash Wednesday is going to be February 14th. So I implore you, please, please turn back, take time, pray. I'm going to close with this prayer of petition and dedication and love to Almighty God. Almighty and merciful God, loving God, open my mind, my heart, and my soul to your infinite love. Guide me in the knowledge of your truth and help me to live according to your will in all things. Channel me in all of my actions that I might reflect the light of your truth toward all that I encounter. Inspire me and those who are placed in positions of influence in governments and religions to find a way of settling the divisions that have caused nations to battle and the separation of the one holy Catholic apostolic church. Inspire families to love and care for all their children and to recognize and accept the diversity that God has created as part of his overall plan. Inspire all your children, regardless of their race, their creed, whether they are Christian, Jew, Hindu, Islam, Sikh, Buddhist, to gather together in brotherhood and peace for the sake of the entire human race. Guide those who believe that Jesus Christ was the promised Messiah of the ages, as Jesus taught with kindness, charity, and goodwill towards all of God's children, for us to do the same. We call upon you, O Lord, because we acknowledge that all things begin and end with you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. In humility and love, we plead with you, knowing all too well that we have failed to follow your ways in the past, and we ask your forgiveness and mercy. Oh, hear us, O oh God, and answer our prayer. Amen. May God bless you and keep you, and let his light shine upon you. Until we meet again, I am Father Bob Janine, and I ask you, please, visit our websites, www orderfranciscansofmercy.org and www.missionsergius.org. Learn about our ministries, and also you'll see a sort of overlooking button on our web page sites where you can actually click on it and it'll take you to PayPal where you can safely and securely make a donation that will help us to continue our ministries. For without the support of others, our ministries will end. And that is what I'm praying and hoping and asking God not to let happen. So until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.